Uh, and welcome. I'm Peter Rolstig. I'm your host on Hawaii's Volunteer Champions uh, program here on thinktechhawaii.com, a program where we talk about volunteers. Uh, you probably figured that out. And we ask volunteers, uh, why do they do what they do? Why do they give up their most precious resources, which are time and effort, uh, to uh, uh, work for some cause or other? And, and uh, we'll find out a little bit more about the causes that they work for. So today, before we begin, uh, this is the second show we've recorded since the tragedy on uh, Maui. Uh, we're continuing to get news of, of deaths and dislocations, missing people. Uh, the, it's a devastation that was unimaginable, and our hearts go out to those people uh, who have survived and who are struggling now. Uh, we know there are many, many of them. And we also know that there are many, many volunteers who are uh, working round the clock, uh, donating money, of course, but also donating time and effort and, and possessions. So having said that, let's jump right in. We, uh, our guests today uh, from, um, from our Kupuna, which is an organization, uh, our Kupuna.com. Uh, Hasina, aloha, welcome. Aloha. So you are a volunteer. And so let's just start out. Uh, what do you do for our Kupuna? So currently I have um, volunteered to uh, help uh, Kapuna in the community that have, um, I believe they have various needs. The Kapuna I'm volunteering with, um, I, I pretty much uh, do a little bit of shopping for her and bring her groceries and things she might need because um, she is unable to do that herself. Um, this Kapuna that I currently volunteer with, uh, she is someone that I've just met recently. So I've just been um, filling in for a volunteer that I believe had to move to the mainland. And so now hopefully I'll be helping her and maybe once a week, once every two weeks, bringing her what she needs. Okay. Uh, and, and how did you get started doing this? So before I started with our Kapuna, there was another um, there was another lady that I was helping in the in the community, and I had a relationship with her um, probably for about four or five years, where I was doing something similar, seeing her once a week, um, and helping her with groceries or picking up um, medications. Or with her, I would also take her to doctor's appointments and things like that. Um, she passed away. She was in her 90s. And so I wanted to continue. And um, our Kapuna, I reached out to them and asked them if, if I could help somebody else in the community. Wow, that's terrific. So let's talk a little bit more about what's involved in, in helping somebody in that situation. How does it work? What do you, how do you find out what they need? All that kind of thing. Sure. So um, in both cases, it's it's pretty straightforward. Um, the they either call me or text me and give me a list of things that they need, and I try to do the best um, and get everything exactly you know what they they you know they want or desire. You know, I'm I that means going to different places. I am I always try to keep their uh, budget in mind, so I will go to Costco to try to save them a little bit of money here and there. Or, um, you know, so it, it's fairly straightforward because they're just sending me a list. Okay. And uh, how many hours uh, a week or a month would you say you devote to this uh, activity? Um, so it's, it's the needs of the Kapuna that I've um, been involved with. I'd say it's maybe two hours per visit, I'd say. Um, that involves doing the shopping and then the travel and then spending a little time and talking story when you're visiting. Yes. Yeah. Uh, full, full disclosure. I'm also a volunteer for our Kapuna. And, okay. and, uh, so I've, I've had, I think three or four, uh, Kevin probably has a list somewhere of, of different Kapuna and, and each one is a little different, obviously. Sure. Yeah. Um, some are very, very frankly, kind of very lonely and really want to no. I'm talking. Do you have that experience too? Yes, I've had that experience. And, um, and the, the woman I was, um, 
volunteer volunteering for earlier, I mean, we really did have quite a long relationship and she didn't have any family. So um, it really became sort of like a family member. Um, I was constantly thinking about her almost like a grandmother figure where if something was happening, if a tropical storm was coming, I I always was thinking about, you know, is she going to be okay? Like, do we need to get her um, any supplies? Like, it, it was just, it was such a rewarding um, relationship for, for both of us, really. But yes, I mean, the talking, talking story and visiting was, was a huge part of it. It wasn't just, you know, dropping off some goods and then, you know, heading home. Of course, that was the, the first one you were dealing with was really a, a personal friend uh, who you started to help, which is a little bit different than when our Kapuna uh, links you with somebody who you've never met. And Oh, right. No, she was, she was actually through, it wasn't through our Kapuna, but it was through another um, volunteer organization. Yeah. I see. Okay. So I had never, I had never met her. I see. So it really was a, a, a new, a new relationship. And right. so far you've had these two different people that you, you've helped. Is that yes. it? Okay. Very good. So is there, I guess the question is, why do you do it? Uh, you know, obviously you, you want to help, but what do you get out of it? What does this, what does this do for you? Sure. Um, so when I began, I, I was thinking to myself, I really want to do something for the community. Um, I feel when people volunteer, they are generally going something that is with, with something that's deeply personal to them. So whether that something in the environment or working with children, for me, it was Kapuna. Um, I was lucky enough to have lived with my grandmother my whole life. She was incredibly dear to me and my brothers and as she aged she was surrounded by all of us and we would just take care of her you know anything that she needed she was surrounded by family so when I go out in the community and I I see Kapuna that I just sort of feel they could use help um I it, it just kind of tugged on my heartstrings you know so um I, I thought maybe their family has moved to the mainland. Maybe they don't have family and then they could use, use assistance. So for me, it was always like we were there for my grandma, but I was just thinking, oh, there's so many Kapuna that don't have that luxury, right? To be surrounded by family or have a big network. So that was what drove me to go this volunteer route. Okay. And how did you find out about our Kapuna? So, um, I'm sorry. Do you remember? Yes, it was, um, they, they began, I believe during the pandemic, um, when, you know, it was a vulnerable population. And so they were, you know, wanted to, uh, assist and help bring groceries to Kapuna so that they didn't have to necessarily expose themselves to the virus. And so that, um, I believe at that time, um, I saw advertisement for, um, I, I can't remember the exact detail of how, but yeah. I mean, Keva, let's say, let's talk to you a little bit. You're the, uh, program director for, uh, our Kapuna and, uh, tell us a little more, uh, I didn't got us started, but how did, uh, how did our Kapuna begin? It's a fairly recent, uh, invention, isn't it? Thank you, Peter. It's great to be here. Um, yes, and Hesina, you're correct. Um, our Kapuna started in March of 2020 in response to the pandemic, actually. Our founder, Gabe Ami, was able to shop for his own very elderly father, but realized there are so many other Kapuna on the island who don't have Ohana who can help them. At the same time, he was hearing about folks in the community who wanted to help out in some way, but didn't know how. A lot of folks were laid off or had time. And so he sort of set up just a database so that we can track folks in the community who want to help with uh, Kapuna, the community who need the help. And that's more or less how we got started. Um, we thought we'd only be open during the pandemic, but as time progressed and vaccinations became more widely available, some Kapuna were able to comfortably shop for themselves. 
and to graduate. And those who remained were those we realized who really need this help um, still to this day. They're homebound, they're low income, they can't afford a delivery service or don't know how to do something like that with just a landline. And they don't have family or others who can help them. And so they really do need help, just as Hasina said, just getting their basics and their essentials. Yeah. I think until you really think about it, you don't realize uh, if, you know, those of us who can, can do it can go shopping. Uh, you drive, you get out of the car, you push the cart around for 30, 40 minutes, you load stuff in the car. But that's really a pretty big undertaking for somebody that's, that's infirm in almost any way. Absolutely. And we're finding so many of these kupuna who may be eligible for insurance provided care and support, but there's a massive shortage of those sorts of workers on the island. Um, the, the pay is just not good enough for them to be here. And so we're sort of serving the folks in that gap who may or may not be eligible, but are unable to even, even if they could use public transportation to get to a grocery store, they're infirm to the point where they can't carry their own groceries or make it very far on their own. Yeah, that would, that's that's been my experience. The people I worked with couldn't really get to the store. If they could get to the store, they couldn't spend an hour on their feet, even leaning on a shopping cart, uh, much less deal with the bags or anything else going out. So uh, what's the size or volume or uh, how in, after only a couple of, after only a year and a half really, or two years, uh, how how big is our Kapuna? Yeah, so our Kapuna has been operating for actually um, almost three and a half years. Okay. Um, and we've served about 550 Kapuna to date. Um, that's statewide. Um, that includes Oahu, Maui, Kauai, Big Island, and Molokai. Um, today, we're about 150 Kapuna, um, 130. And the biggest program is, of course, the delivery program, like what um, Peter Yu and Yu Hasina are both helping with. And you folks have both been with us for several years, which is just amazing. It's incredible that we have so many volunteers who've stuck around, even if they've taken a break from from illness or vacation or whatnot, and then tried to come back. It's been incredible that we've had so many returning volunteers. Um, it's just it's just so amazing. And so the volunteers, the Kapuna that we serve, um, it's mostly through the delivery program. But over time, we also realized that a lot of these homebound seniors don't have um, friends or others that they can socialize with in the community. So we developed some socialization programs as well. They're much smaller, but we can match a kapuna with a phone buddy or with a high school student who can be their pen pal, and they can find other ways to socialize in the community, even if they're stuck at home. I wasn't even aware of that. That's terrific, because as I said, I think my experience is very often there's a loneliness factor that even goes further than the, than the shopping uh, factor. So that's, that's terrific. Do you have any sense of, of what the, the need is? Uh, uh, how many uh, people out there who might need help if only we could find them and if only we could find the volunteers to help them? Absolutely. The need is definitely still great. We find um, most common and biggest need to be in major places like Honolulu. Um, sort of, you know, in major cities like Honolulu is where we see a lot of that low-income senior housing. So there's always a need there. We always need nude volunteers because folks are moving and um, getting busy and things like that. So that's always a place of need. We also seem to find great need in rural areas. And it could be um, Kihei on Maui or it could be, um, gosh, Pahoa, big parts of the Big Island um, where there's just not a lot of services. So we are still getting referrals. We um, Over time, we developed a referral policy as a way of ensuring that we're supporting the Kapuna who are most in need, but also ensuring that each Kapuna in our program has an advocate who's there to support them with the needs beyond what we can do. We recognize our own limitations and just we're here to serve in the ways we serve, but having collaborations and partnerships in the greater community with other service organizations helps ensure that the Kapuna are getting other needs met, whether they need help with laundry or cooking or rides to dental medical appointments. And so we want to ensure that each kapuna has that referring agent who is also their advocate. And so we're getting referrals um, for these kapunas um, in these more rural parts of the island where we're struggling also to find volunteers. It's The need is going to be continued to be there for sure. Okay. And uh, who pays for all this? So that, you know, obviously, Asin and I are volunteers. We don't cost much. 
but uh, who's, how is this being financed? We've got a fairly big behind the scenes infrastructure and website and all that sort of thing. And you, it's got to be paid for. How does that work? We're still a small nonprofit after three and a half years, but p primarily our funding has been supported through local grants um, through Hawaii. We've had some larger partnerships with the uh, Hawaii Public Health Institute. They're known as HiFi um, colloquially, and they've been incredibly supportive of our efforts. And so we've had multiple grants and contracts with them. Um, some of it's through sort of federal funds through the administration, through community living. Um, we're also looking into sort of larger and longer term funding strategies like billing with Medicaid and things like that. Those are just, they take a lot longer to get rolling. But, you know, even private donations have helped little bits here and there, but definitely these um, Hawaii grants have been very supportive. And I know on your website, uh, there uh, is a, a page of supporters and people can go and see uh, what kind of organizations are supporting you. And that's a pretty prestigious list, if I may say. Uh, giving everybody a feeling, I think, of comfort in working with an organization that they probably never heard of. Mm, thank you, Peter. I appreciate that. We've been very fortunate to have support from large organizations, small organizations, local companies like Hawaii Electric, um, you know, banks and foundations have all been supportive. So it's been just incredible across the board. No, oh, that's good. Uh, Hasina, the, coming back to you for a bit here. Um, it sounds like uh, you're, you do a lot of good without committing a huge amount of time uh, on a weekly or monthly basis. Is that fair to say? Um, I, I, I would say yes. I, I believe it's incredibly helpful to the people that were, you know, um, the kapuna that we're servicing. The time uh, investment is, is just it's really minimal so far with the Kuna I've volunteered with. It hasn't been something that um, requires a lot of um, juggling my personal life. I, I don't have children, so I don't have a lot of um, school drop-offs and after after school activities, et cetera. So I've got time to to give to members of the community. That's true. But on the other hand, you know, in many organizations, if you're a volunteer, they they give you a lot of stuff. Uh, they have events for you and they, you know, I, I work at, with, with one organization that has a, a big volunteer picnic once a year and all kinds of things like that. Uh, we're not getting very much of that, are we? Right. I, I, I can only speak for myself, but I don't need the, I don't need the stuff. Um, and you, you need, uh, I mean, with, with any cause, you just sort of need the boots on the ground, right? Um, you're going to have those events that are like the, um, I don't know, the, the, like make a wish galas where you get the, that you're getting the, the donations, right? Like you, you need to put on those events for, um, um, the drive to get, um, the support, especially financial support, but then, you know, we're just sort of the foot soldiers, right? Like, and I'm totally fine with that. That suits my personality. Um, much more than saying the like social aspect or the like the um the the parties or the the galas or i hear you i got it that's that that's great but it, it is interesting to me some people love to do volunteer work but very frankly they get a lot of uh, ego satisfaction out of it and a lot of uh, yeah. you know show face and and uh, that's great nothing wrong with that but sure. uh, there are people who are uh, you know, uh, in some ways, the highest form of charity is the anonymous kind and the kind yeah. that you know, isn't being done for the glory and, you know, both good, but they're different ways of approaching uh, charitable work. Right. And that, I mean, you need them both. Maybe um, that's something that Keva can talk about is, I mean, everybody plays a role in the organization. Okay, Keva, maybe you can talk about that. What, you know, this is not a, the kind of organization that has uh, you know, big giveaways uh, of stuff for their volunteers. Uh, some organizations need to do that. And some seem to be able to get by on the goodwill of, of, uh, of people. How do you see that? Absolutely. You know, this actually almost brings me to tears just thinking about it because for the past three plus years, I've often thought, how can I show gratitude to our volunteers? Because you're right, you are the boots on the ground. Um, you see so much more than we ever do. We operate entirely remotely. 
Um, and I have met only one kupuna that I have, you know, shopped for myself. But there are so many um, volunteers on the ground across the entire state who are doing this work and you don't get recognized. We don't do big things and, um, you know, we, we aren't very flashy in part to protect the population that we're serving. Um, we, you know, we maintain a lot of anonymity to protect these kupuna. Um, but I, I'm always wondering how can we just like shower our volunteers with gratitude because you were doing this. It, it is, you know, it is sort of thankless work in the sense that you were just giving and giving and you show up every week, every other week. And our volunteers are just there and they're um, providing such an incredible need that I think is just beyond just something nice like picking up trash on the beach. I am an environmentalist myself, so I'm not knocking. I think that's incredible work. I really do. And yet for a kapuna to rely on someone to get their food and their medication regularly is is so incredible. Um, whenever I have a kapuna calling to say, what happened to my volunteer? I need my food. It breaks my heart. And so to just see these volunteers show up regularly, um, you thanklessly, it, it, it is an incredible, it is an incredible service. And I think you're right, Peter, it's something that, that perhaps goes unnoticed. It's not for the ego driven for sure. It's, it really is just, um, beautiful that people want to continue doing this. And, and it, have a, oh, yeah. sorry, have a, you, um, we do. So the thanks isn't necessarily coming from the organization itself, but I mean, the Kapuna are so thankful for just you arriving, right? I mean, it's just, I mean, my experience has been almost that their faces light up and, and they're just, yeah. So that's really the, the thanks, at least uh, that's how I feel about it. Um, so it's, it, it is just so rewarding, just the relationships that you're forming with people in the community. That's great. So you don't need a t-shirt with the ARC logo on it. You don't need any, yeah. uh, any bags. You don't need any paraphernalia. Uh, you don't need to go to a big event once or twice a year. You're, you get it at the doorway when you bring that stuff to people that need it. Right. That's, that's my experience. But say if there's somebody who is really gets energized about putting on a large event where you could foster relationships with donors or, you know, sort of a business mingling kind of scenario, then that is great because you need, you need that. Right. And that can be rewarding, um, to that volunteer, but yeah, yeah. nothing wrong with that. It's just no. kind of approaches to things and where, where people get their, uh, you know, get the, the will to continue to give time and effort and, and in many cases money. So uh, that that's that's terrific. Let me ask you a, a harder question, if I could. Is there anything you would change based on your experience so far? Anything you would, you know, Kevin won't listen. She'll ignore you for a moment. Uh, if, if you could uh, have your way, say, oh, I wish they did this or I wish they did that. Is there anything in that category? Um. Uh, to be totally honest, I do not have feedback of that nature. I have had really positive experiences with the entire our you know, team. They're very um, responsive, and if I have any concerns, then they are there to listen. It's been it's been really great. Well, that's a great recommendation. Now, Keva can come back into the conversation and. Uh... <laughs> Yeah. And I'm open to feedback. So oh, we absolutely okay. always welcome feedback. For sure. If I had, if I had some, I would definitely give it. I'm just, it, it's such a great job that you guys are doing. It, and we're so grateful. You know, our Kapuna are so grateful to have organizations like this out there to couple um, them with people who have time to give. That's great. Yeah, Keva, um, just so I'm clear, how do, uh, Kupuna or homebound people, how, how do they find you? Is, is, that's probably got to be one of the bigger challenges because you're not a well-known organization. Mm -hmm. So we're posted on um, various platforms like the Aloha United Way. They know about us. So when Kupuna call into some platform like that, where they're just saying, I need help, where can I get it? They give out our number. So some Kupuna know us through that. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. Various uh, referring agents, Kaiser, Permanente, 
um, St. Francis. There are different organizations throughout the state that we try to make ourselves known in front of. And so their referring agents can also refer their clients to us. That's, um, you know, as I mentioned, we need referrals anyway. So a lot of folks are sent to us through that as well. Um, you know, Kupuda can can find us just by learning about us through hospitals. Sometimes um, a hospital discharge social worker will also be sending clients our way. Um, yep. And what about volunteers? I found out through Frank, I was, I uh, retired from Hawaiian Electric about a year and a half ago, and I found out through the, uh, what used to be called a company nurse, but is now that kind of company health and wellness coordinator and and uh, she puts out a weekly newsletter and then it said uh, here's this organization Arca Plus. they're looking for volunteers to deliver uh deliver groceries which always seem more appealing to me than you know meals on wheels which is a different similar but different kind of organization how do uh volunteers find you normally i think that depends too we have definitely at different times dispatched you know student volunteers, student interns, or just any volunteers who want to help out to post up flyers around their own town. Um, radio PSAs have definitely gone out. So when volunteers do hear about us, we're on also some volunteer websites like Kanu Hawaii or Hands on Maui. So when volunteers do find us, then they can find our website, dig around, and then they'll give us a call and inquire what, what they want to know about us. Um, but it's really easy for them to sign up on our website, arcapuna.com. Um, all we ask for is the volunteers' basic information plus a copy of their driver's license and driver's insurance. We run the background check ourselves, and and then we can do a brief orientation to get them going. Okay. Our Kupuna, one word, ourkupuna.com is really the, the key to the kingdom here, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay. Uh, do you, uh, I, I'm assuming the answer is yes, but do you need more volunteers right now? We always need volunteers, like I mentioned, especially in certain areas um definitely the rural parts of most islands and then um honolulu proper itself was is where we definitely most need volunteers or if folks live in other parts of the islands but are willing to travel to those parts of the island that's that's always the most helpful for sure yeah you you've always been very good about finding people very close to where i live which happens to be out of down near downtown and and uh uh, I guess I would be willing to consider driving to, you know, remote parts of the island, but uh, remote for me. But uh, the fact that I don't have to and that only she takes a few hours uh, uh, a week or a month is makes it really attractive to do so much good in relatively short amount of time. And very frankly, I deal with my own shopping at the same time. So, uh, you know, it's kind of a win win. I think that's one of the great things about the way you, you handle things. Oh, good. Our goal is to make it as sustainable as possible for volunteers to, to want to continue um, to sort of hanai or adopt a kapuna and then continue helping them. So thank you both for what you have done for the past several years and, and what you continue to do today to help your kapuna. All right. Well, I think uh, I want to thank you both, uh, both for what you do and uh, for spending a uh, little time uh, with us. I hope uh, some of my regular, both of my regular listeners here uh, will uh, decide to volunteer or will tell other people to volunteer. It really is about as painless as you can get, uh, especially if you enjoy going to the grocery store. It's, <laughs> it's terrific. Uh, and uh, it really does meet a need that I don't think many of us think about. The people who can't get out, obviously, are just about invisible to us. They they are, you know, in, in our line of view most of the time. So. Uh, there is a miserable population there that needs help and is grateful for it. So thank you both and the other volunteers who are uh, working with our Kapuna and, and uh, we wish you all the best. Um, we're going to close as we often do in uh, a with a, a thought uh, from Maya Angelou this week about, uh, you know, what it means to, to live life. And she basically says, you can't go through life with a catcher's mitt on on uh, both hands because you got to have the ability to throw something back. And uh, I think Hasina is, and all the other volunteers and Kevin and her devotion to this job are, are doing exactly that. So we'll be back in a couple of weeks with uh, more volunteers. Uh, I encourage you to check out the website. Uh, you'll see it's a very reputable organization in case, uh, just because you haven't heard of it doesn't mean it isn't a, a you know, bona fide organization doing good work, 501c3. And uh, thank you both again.
for this very interesting half hour. Aloha.